Kuman229 here with another Topic of the Week video. And while we are in January of 2018, I had one more Halo topic that I wanted to get to for Christmas month that I didn't because I was delayed working on the last one. But I wanted to get to this one before I moved on and got back on schedule. This is about Halo Legends, and the topic was submitted by Tumblr user Angel89. And her topic is. What do you think of Halo Legends canon status and the short stories in it? What are some of your favorite shorts in it? Okay, uh, my feelings on Halo Legends is mixed. You see, I, there are a lot of things that I like about it and a lot of things that I can't stand. Uh, a lot of the shorts have really neat ideas and mm, then some stuff that totally breaks canon. Like, my favorite short in it is the package, hands down. Uh, I like the 3D animation. I feel like that blends the best with the you know the games, which are obviously 3D. I like that we finally get to see some of Blue Team with Chief animated. I'm like, yeah. I mean, you have Kelly and Fred. I mean, for some reason Linda's not there, and we have two other new Spartans that die. But you know, we actually get to see Chief with Kelly, and is. Despite the issues with it, one of the reasons it's my favorite is because we actually get to see Chief interacting with Kelly. And in a lot of ways, the best, most in-character stuff is his stuff with Kelly. Like, there's a lot of stuff that's kind of dumb about that short, but the, the core concept of it is great. Seeing Chief interact with Kelly is great. Everything else, uh, it's like, there are neat ideas all over the place in this. Like, okay, so Dr. Halsey's been kidnapped by the Covenant, and they have her in the middle of this Covenant fleet, and they need, they send a team of Spartans to go rescue her, and it includes Blue Team. Yeah! And then, you know, they rescue Halsey, and then, you know, then they escape. A solid idea for a story, and frankly, I mean, there's a reason I like it so much that I incorporated it into my Halo 4 rewrite as a flashback mission. <laughs> But it breaks canon so much. And this annoys me so much because this could have been so much better. Like, all right. So the armor that the Spartans are wearing is different. I still am not over this. The whole point really is that they all basically have the same armor. Yes, there is different, you know, variants of Mahalina armor, but for the Spartan 2s, when they got their armor, and I think this would be the Mark IV armor before, yeah, because you get the Mark V armor right before, you know, the game start, and they were going to get ready to go to Operation Red Flag, they all look the same. That's kind of the point. Like, when it's a point is made in the books that Dr. Halsey is one of the few people who can identify a Spartan in their armor without, she can look at him and say, oh, that's John. That's Kelly, that's Sam, that's Kurt. She, she can identify them just by looking at them, which is supposed to be... I mean, they show this off in um, First Strike when the Spartan 2s, surviving Spartan 2s that went down to Reach uh, meet up with Halsey in um, the base. She basically starts calling their names out just by looking at them. It's because she knows them. She knows them all very intimately. She's like a mother to all of them. So... But one of the problems that there's a, this has happened a lot with three four three, and they they completely missed the point. Because, but I know why they're doing it. They're doing they're making all the Spartans look different, even in time. Like okay, in new games, okay. If like in Halo Five, if they all look different, I mean the designs are pretty bad. But if they look different, okay, this is new armor. But the old armor just explicitly said that you know they look basically look the same. They're basically all the same color, all the same looks. It's like when you look at um. Halo Wars and Red Team in that. They basically all look the same. Outside of, you know, <laughs> their names, there's really not much difference between them. That's kind of the point. Spartans are supposed to look the same. But they make them all look so drastically different in material that's supposed to take place way before, you know, Halo Combat evolved. And it annoys me. Like, I like the armor design. I like Kelly's design in this. I like Fred's design. I like how he's got the like the knives, you know, on the shoulder pads. That's cool, especially since Fred is, you know, specifically good with knives, and that's a nice little detail that they brought in from the books. 
but they didn't look different in the books. <laughs> and I can accept them changing their when they changed their armor, but not in the past. Not having radically different armor with significantly different designs, totally different colors. Yes, I pr understand this is very likely for marketing purposes. You know, you can't just market, hey, all the Spartans look exactly the same, but hey, but no, that one, that one's Kelly, okay, you see that one's Fred, and they may look the same, but, you know, they take their helmets off, they look different. I understand that, but it's not worth breaking canon. I'd be so much more satisfied if they kept with the canon, especially since I keep seeing that everyone says that, you know, Halo Legends is canon, but then they also have to give the disclaimer, but nothing actually happens the way it looks like it happened because it's inconsistent with canon. And, like, that's that's my problem with this. Like, in the package, they, they the guy, who whoever he is, who's given the Spartans their orders, says, you know, you have, you know, this is your time limit, and if you don't make it out, we're going to blow up the Covenant fleet. And, I'm, and my first reaction was, um, no, you're not. If one ship, they have one ship, which somehow has flawless cloaking technology, could defeat an entire fleet, humanity wouldn't be losing the war. And uh, I know a lot of people are just like, um, that's literally impossible. You can't do that. And then, uh, and then you have... And one of the worst things in it is, annoyingly, Dr. Halsey, who, I mean, I don't think we get any, like, date for this short, but Dr. Halsey looks like she's 20, which, considering that, at the very least, she'd have to be, like, 30. She'd have to be at least, like, 30. I don't remember, don't remember the exact date she was born, but, you know, we know that, you know, in 2525, when the Covenant you know, showed up and started and started the war, she would be in her 30s. And by this point, you know, you it's like, but she looks like she's 20 and she's blonde. I've seen people try to explain this, like jumping through hoops trying to explain how it's not completely breaking canon. It, it just breaks canon. Just You just got to accept that. I mean, she's blonde. And I always pick, when... Ever she was, I was reading the books, I always pictured her with brown hair. Especially, she had it longer when she was young. It's this short blonde hair in the, um, in the package. It's like she always had, you know, longer brown hair, and she ended up cutting it short as she got older. And before, you know, turned white, because she's old. And another thing about her is that she acts more like Cortana than Dr. Halsey. It's like, okay, some of the things she says are fine, but when she says, don't make a girl a promise, you know you can't... And I was sitting there, I'm like, no, that's Cortana's line from Halo 2. Don't... Yes, Cortana is based on Dr. Halsey's brain, but Cortana is not Dr. Halsey, and Dr. Halsey is not Cortana. They are different people. And it feels like they were just doing that because, hey, everyone knows this line, and not as everyone is as familiar with Dr. Halsey, and just... It's annoying. I mean, there's a lot of this that sort of stuff throughout the um, thing, and I'll talk about others. I mean, I may sound like I'm really bashing the package. I love the package. I love seeing Spartans in action, like that hallway scene where you see Chief Fred and Kelly, you know, just dashing through, gunning the uh, Covenant, you know, down, and then they're grabbing weapons, and they're throwing grenades. It's awesome, and it's the kind of action that I want to see more of. It's just that the canon consistency is bad. And another thing that this actually happens in a number of the shorts. Um, you have Spartan 2's dying. And the only reason that this really bugs me is because the actual number of surviving Spartans is really confusing. We don't really know the exact number of how many Spartans really survived the augmentation versus how many, you know, died until the fall of Reach. And then, and then you know, we have, we have numbers on who, how many were there. But then you have to you have all these Spartan twos coming out of the works, and this has been a big problem with three four three. I mean, there was a little, there were muddled numbers with under Bungie's era, but with three four three, they're just like tossing Spartan twos in left and right, and it's like stop. Especially since so many of them die before the fall of Reach, you have to start accounting for those lost numbers with the numbers given in the fall of Reach. But then you also have surviving Spartan twos that weren't in the books. It gets to the point where it's just like, yeah, just give up. And it's it's annoying. It's like, I don't mind there being us learning about other Spartans, because there were over 30 Spartans. 
but we don't know the exact number. We know about half of them survived the augmentation, but the absolute, the actual number of Spartans is so muddled, and Halo Legends being taken as canon does not help. Gosh dang it, Frank O'Connor. Uh, <laughs> but uh, like with um, this also happens in The Babysitter and Homecoming. And interesting ideas, I like, it's like, and I'll say this, pretty much all of these, except for Origins, which I really don't care about, because it's just Cortana talking about, you know, the history, and I, I never actually checked it out because I was never interested, but I swear if they ever touched anything related to the, the stupid Forerunner Human War from Halo 4, which is so stupid and doesn't make any sense, you know, I'll probably flip a table, but I didn't check it out because I just don't care. I don't really think that's... I really never saw the need for that. But... But with, like, the babysitter. The idea of the babysitter is neat. You actually have Spartan... You have, you have a Spartan assigned to work with a group of ODSTs. And, and it's nice to... I always love seeing more stuff about the ODSTs one-sided rivalry with the Spartans. That's actually a neat. I like seeing more of that because the Spartans have nothing but, you know, respect for the ODSTs, but the ODSTs have this, you know, weird, like, rivalry because they used to be the best of the best, and then the Spartans came in and they're the best of the best, so they kind of got put down a little, even though they're still the best of the best, and there's still a lot of great ODSTs. There's a reason why there was a game made about the ODSTs that was more like DLC, expanded DLC, but... You know, there's a reason Halo 3 ODSC was made. ODSCs are actually really cool. But uh, they have this one-sided rivalry with the Spartans. And you get to see, you know, these, these ODSTs react to working with the Spartan. And the Spartan 2 dies. Cal. And another issue I have with Cal is I remember, I remember this very vividly when I was watching it for the first time. Years ago, actually is she has this huge, like, all this massive long hair, and I was thinking, how do you put that in your helmet? I mean, Halo's normally really grounded, and a lot of the, you know, the female Spartans either have very short hair or shaved. Like, I remember Linda's is, ex is explicitly cut very short. And sure, yeah, some of them have, you know, some hair, but it's cut short because, you know, you don't want to deal with massive long, four-foot-long hair in a helmet. It, it's confusing, and I thought that was kind of dumb. I mean, another thing in um, Homecoming, where you see uh, the idea of a Spartan 2 kid leaving and going and finding her, her Flash clone. That's an interesting idea. I don't know how well that works in the actual canon, and I don't recall... In fact, the only um, time I recall Spartans ever really causing anything of any significant distress is... Actually, um, great team. Uh, when we get those flashbacks in the Cole Protocol, when you see them basically just being a, b a bunch of snots, <laughs> which is which is fine, you know, considering their situation of being kidnapped and you know basically uh, turned into super soldiers. But I don't remember. I just the idea of it seems a little weird. I like the idea in concept, and it's one of those neat sort of what if ideas. I see that a lot with um, the, the Halo Legends. That's kind of how I view a lot of them. These nice little what-if stories. like uh, some, But a lot of them have interesting concepts. The um, the duel, with uh, which shows uh, old, an older Arbiter. I believe I don't know if this is like the first Arbiter. You, uh, but you see him you know, basically challenging the religion of the prophets and not believing in the great journey. Which is interesting. I like that. And I think they called him Thel. Which is confusing. Because if anyone knows the name of the Arbiter in that's in the main Halo trilogy, it's Thel Vadam. So, and I, I saw, thought I saw them call him Thel in this. I'm like, what? Maybe. Ugh. But uh, it's interesting to see that. But there's some distracting elements in the duel. Like... I went back and rewatched it because it had been a while since I'd seen that one. And I'm seeing Sangeli with regular jaws. Like normal human jaws. Like, what about their, uh, you know, little pincer jaw things? That's kind of distinct. And you see, like, that, you see, like, the armor that has those, like, prongs that are meant to guard them. But then they have regular jaws. And 
I don't know if they're trying to say that that's sort of in like evolutionary change, but it seems like a weird change. And one thing that really undercut the drama of that is the design of the female Sangeli. She looks like a weird wizard, lizard. Oh, I said almost said wizard, a lizard lady. But she doesn't look like a Sangeli. Like she has, like from a side view, you can see she has the extended neck. You know that's you know horizontal, like you know the other Sangeli. But if you look at her straight on, she looks like almost a normal person with like lizard features. And oh my gosh, it was so distracting. And they wanted it to be like all serious, like you know when she dies, she's the wife of the Arbiter and. Yeah, I couldn't take that seriously. Even though it's a serious scene and I like the concept, it's just... I mean, okay, well, you know, alright. So we get to see a Sangeli wielding a dual energy swords. So that's cool as well. Oh, but I also like that we get to see some, like, older swords from the Sangelis that look like energy swords, but they're regular blades. So they're still, like, the same style, but it's regular. So you, so you can see, okay, so that's why they developed the energy swords to look like that. That's where their swords... That's just the way their swords were. So that was an interesting detail. Though something kind of get lost in the sort of muddy animation. It's very simple animation. And it looks like, it kind of looks like a moving painting, which can look nice, except some of the colors are a little flat or or they're too samey. And it gets a little confusing. The story is also a little weird in the, the way it's set up because sometimes it feels like it's, I think it's set up in like anachronistic and it just feels a little, like, a little confused. I mean, there's some weird stuff. I like the idea of it. I know there are some elements that I like of it, but again, you know, I just have a few canonical issues. Why do the elites look like that? Why does he have a regular jaw? <laughs> um, another one that I liked, but again, I just don't... I, I actually, my issue with um, the prototype is more so in the fact that it's basically a lot of typical anime melodrama. Like, okay, you, so you have this, I think it's a sergeant, he was a, a commanding of this unit, and they all died, and they basically all call him, like, a ghost. Uh, he's, like, this husk of a man who has no emotions, and the, uh, one of the, the soldiers, she died in his arms, melodramatically, of course, and they cut back to this a lot of her final words to him, telling him to be human, and she's like, just like, but just for me, be human. But they stretched this out over the entire short, which is like 10 to 15 minutes, I want to say. I watched it a few days ago. But uh, it's it's interesting because then you see ultimately his character development shows that after he lost his whole squad that he has this, rep he, he has this reputation for not caring at all, period. He doesn't flinch when people die. But he, um, he in the short, during the you know, present time, really, he uh, he gets this prototype they were supposed to destroy, and he uses it to fight against these Covenant forces so that his his squad can get out while he sacrifices himself to destroy this prototype while also using it to fight against the Covenant. I think a lot of people have pointed out that this thing is way too effective against Covenant forces. It's just mopping them left and right with missiles and you know, machine guns, you know, it's just, and it can fly, and... It's totally anime, and it's cool. I like this. I like that fight scene of the prototype killing all the um, Covenant fleet or fleet forces. But you know, you think that you think that the UNSC would have worked more on suits like that, especially since a regular person seems to be able to wield it, use it just fine. Because one of the things about the Maholina armor is that a normal human couldn't use it; they would literally break. Because it's so powerful. That's why the Spartans got them. <laughs> because Humans couldn't use them. Only the Spartans who were literally walking tanks could handle them. But, uh... But, and then the, um, The confirmation words that, that the suit needs is be human, and I'm just like... That's a little on the nose when the whole arc words of it are be human, and... It's just... It's an interesting, and overall, it could have been a, a much better story if they cut out the melodrama as much, or they cut down on it. But it's fine, it's just, it's probably the one that's the least canonically inconsistent. 
but it still raises some questions, like, why do they have something so powerful, and why do they want to destroy it, why don't they use this, more of these. But alas, that's just a fairly minor quip compared to some of the other ones. Overall, Halo Legends is... Oh, don't wait, there's one I have to talk about. The one that's explicitly non-canon, the, um, the odd one out. Um... I like this one. You have to divorce it from canon because there's no way there'd be a Spartan with the number 1337 that's literally just a reference to Leet Speak. But I like that and I actually, I like the personality of Spartan 1337. Sort of bumbling, but still someone who actually is very heroic. And uh, <laughs> he ends up fighting this weird rope, I, I want to call him a rope beast. This weird alien cyborg animal thing sent by the prophets, but to you know fight and <laughs> then you see regular humans come out of nowhere and start pulling out some DVZ crap of like flying and doing these like martial arts and I'm just like <laughs> and they're fighting this monster and I had to laugh. I actually had to pause it when I, when I, the first time I watched it and I was watching it. And I was just I was laughing so hard because. It was pretty darn grounded for all, all things considered, and humans can't do that. But it was so fun to watch just because of how ridiculous it was. It was very Dragon Ball, especially with all, all the comedy in it. Uh, but one of the things that really stuck out to me that I, it was fairly minor point, but I thought it was arguably the most interesting uh, thing about it was that these kids that the uh, this uh, thirteen thirty seven meets are raised by this AI that they call Mama. And, or well, you find out it's an AI afterwards, and it seems to be this AI on a ship, but it might also be in a house. It's not really explained, they don't really talk much about this, but, you know, Cortana even notes that this AI is old, but it seems happy where it is, and I'm like, okay, no, no, that's interesting. I mean, we, we have some, you know, a lot of, you know, they focus on the uniqueness of AIs, but I want to know more about this AI. I want to know about the ship that it was obviously on. I know I want to know about these kids who seemingly came from that sh that UNSC ship. I want to know about this AI that seems to be it's raising these kids. I want to know more about that. That's actually a really cool idea. But since it doesn't, it's a short. It's not like a movie or even like an episode of a TV show. It's they don't really go into it. But, you know, but it's explicitly non-canon, so the ridiculous elements I can just laugh off. It's the, um, the other parts are just, it's weird because there's a lot of these that I like. I, I explicitly, I love the package, despite its canonical inconsistency. I like the prototype for the story that it tells. It just gets really melodramatic. I like Odd Man Out, or Odd One Out. I don't remember the exact name, but, I mean, I like the idea of the babysitter and homecoming. It's just, you know... It's just, you know, some like, when you're dealing with Spartans dying before the fall of Reach, it's like, there's really careful. Like, if they showed Sheila dying, because we know that Sheila's dead from the books, uh, Dr. Halsey says this herself, I would really have loved to have seen a short on that. That way, it's like, okay, so she dies, but we know she's dead from the Nylon trilogy. And this is just a problem, especially since it can, this kind of came out in the era of the transference from Bungie to 343, so... Frank O'Connor was basically in charge of this, and gosh dang it, Frank O'Connor, you keep screwing everything up. <laughs> but, uh, I understand that there's just a lot of confusion with a lot of expanded universe elements, and I personally view most everything in uh, Halo Legends as non-canon, and just, you know, different interpretations by different studios. The one that I, the only one that I consider even remotely canon is the package, but even then you would have to, I ha that's why I made my, um, that a mission in my Halo 4 rewrite was that, you know, I like this idea, but I wanted a canon compliant version. I straight up said that in my video on it. And that's really kind of the problem is that, you know, there's a lot of neat ideas, but they would need to be changed to be canon compliant. And I think there are other stories they could have done. And I, I understand that a lot of all of these were outsourced to various studios, a lot of anime studios. So a lot of people in Japan were doing this, and Bungie's, you know, Halo is an American franchise. 
So obviously they're not all going to be like super completely consistent, but I mean, there's, there's more I could go into and, oh, you know what? I think one of these also had Halsey with long blonde hair. That might have been, it's been a while since I've seen Homecoming. That might have been Homecoming. But I haven't seen all, I didn't watch all of these again recently, but, but it's like, I like a lot of these. It's just a lot of canonical inconsistencies. I don't consider them canon, really. I really honestly don't consider any of this true canon. I just like a lot of the ideas. And that about sums up my feelings on Halo Legends. So, yeah, I think I'm going to end this right here. And just go uh, right into the new year for my next topics. Because <laughs> this should have come out in December. Anyway. So, uh, if you want to submit a topic to me, you can simply comment below on YouTube, or if you're on Tumblr, send me an ask and do topic colon and whatever topic you want me to talk about. Just make sure to follow the rules I'll be posting down below. If you want to watch last week's topic video, you can check that out here. If you want to watch next week's topic video, you can check that out here when I get that done. And thank you for watching, and Happy New Year.